everyone, and welcome to the Stitch Sessions, and welcome to our next installment in our Pillow Talk Crochet Series. It's the month of May, so this month we are going to work on the Lulu Pillow, and I've called this the Lulu Pillow because we are using the Loop Stitch to create the look. I know it's cheesy, but I thought it works, and it's a great way to help you remember uh, which pillow we are working on. So um, if you're new here, my name is Karen and I love all things to do with crafting with crochet. And every year I create a crochet series. So we will uh, I come up with a theme and we will create a project at the beginning of every month in relation to that theme. So for 2023, our theme is Pillow Talk. And for the month of May, this is the pillow we're gonna be working on. Look at how fun this is. So it gives it a little bit of extra texture, but it's actually really simple to do, believe it or not. Now you may have seen my uh, loop stitch crochet tutorial. And if you need something that's a, a kind of slows down a little bit more. I will leave a link for that in the description box down below that you can reference. But I do take you through it step by step in this project. It's just simply the loop stitch and double crochet stitches in the round. That's it, that's all. And we keep going until we create a circle. So for the pillow shape this month, we are working on a circular pillow. And I just thought it was kind of nice for, you know, May, we think springtime, Mother's Day, all of that beautiful fun stuff. So I just thought this yellow and the green look really lovely. Um, kind of gives you a little bit of a, a flower vibe, flower motif there. So I thought that would be kind of fun. So let's just dive in. I am going to walk you through the materials that you want to get together in order to create your pillow. And then let's start stitching her up. So the yarn I'm using for this project is some scrap yarn, which I love to do. I had a lot left over from the holiday season, so I'm very excited about using it up. Now, this is Lion Brand's Heartland yarn in the, it's like a sagey green. I'll put up a graphic for it here on the screen. And I've got some of this Bernat Premium yarn in yellow, which I think would make a great spring uh, combo. As you can see, I don't have much of it left. So I'm going to do one side of my panel in the green and yellow, and then I'm going to do the other side of my panel, my pillow. So one panel will be in green and yellow. And actually, I've already started creating some of the first side of the panel. So you can see that there. So that's how it's coming out. So don't think that I'm going to use just this for one panel, one side. And then the other side I'm going to do in green and white. And this is the softy baby yarn in case you're wondering. So as long as they're all a medium four weight yarn, you should be good to go. So I would say if you're getting something like the Bernat Premium Yarn, if you're using just two colors, one skein in each color should be plenty. If you're going to use four different colors, obviously one skein each is more than enough for our pillow, okay? So that's what I'm using there for yarn, and the hook size I'm going to be using is a 5.5 millimeter hook, which is also known as an I or a size 9. As always, make sure that you have a pair of scissors on hand and a yarn needle to sew in all of your ends. There will be a few here. And of course, you're going to need a pillow insert. Now, I am making this as a cover for an existing pillow I have here. Some of you guys may recognize this. This is the Sweet Pea Pillow. You guys all loved this pillow and as do I. So when I made this pillow, I actually sewed the insert into it. It is a 16 inch diameter round pillow, which is about 40.5 centimeters. If you'd like to use the exact pillow insert, I will leave a link for it in the description box down below, okay? And so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create um, a pillow cover. And because of that, you're also going to need a zipper so that you can take the cover off and put it back on. Now, I've picked up here an invisible zipper. I picked this up at Fabricland. I'm not sure in the, in the States if there's Fabricland, but any craft store or fabric store will have this zipper. Now, this one is 22 inches in length, which is quite long. 
I always like to get them a little bit longer than shorter so that I can adjust the size if I need. For this project, probably 18 inches is going to be plenty. And I'll also put the metric size up here to give you all the conversion for all of my European crochet friends. Of course, you also want a thread and a thread needle to hand sew the zipper. Now, sewing the zipper part, I will not show in this tutorial because I have done a separate tutorial, which many of you may have seen recently, on how to hand sew a zipper. And that tutorial can apply for all of these types of projects. And of course, I will leave a link to that in the description box down below when it's time to sew up your zipper. Okay, gang, let's get started on our pillow. Okay, so our pillow is a round shape, so we're going to be working in the round. So we're going to begin this by starting with a cinch circle. Now I'm picking up my green color here because I'd like that to be the center color as well as the main background color of my panel. So I'm starting with a cinch circle here. It's basically like starting a slip knot. So you're gonna insert your hook, pull up a loop, but do not cinch this closed. You wanna try your best to then chain one. I know it can be awkward, but practice will help you get through it. So there we go, we've got our cinch circle and now we're gonna chain up an additional two. So we have one and two. So these three chains will count as a double crochet. So next what we're gonna do is we are going to place a double crochet into the center of our ring. So we yarn over and pull up that loop, pull through the first two and pull through the second two. So technically we have two double crochets. We've got our chain three and we've got one double crochet. You are gonna continue placing a one double crochet into the ring here until you have a total of 12 stitches. Okay, I've just completed my 12th stitch, so you have something that looks like that. And now we want to cinch our center shut. So this is where you take that short tail and you pull on it, and don't be afraid to pull it tight. You want it to go through all the stitches, and that's what cinches our center shut. In order to finish off round number one, we wanna find the top of that chain three. So that's right there and we're gonna slip stitch to join our round. Now at this point in time, you just wanna go back and double check. Starting here, you wanna go back and make sure that you have 12 stitches. This is really important. So once you've confirmed you have 12 stitches, we're gonna move on to round number two, and we're gonna begin by chaining three, one, two, and three. And then back into that same stitch, we're gonna place another double crochet stitch. So right where we slip stitch. And I like to kind of get it right in that same loop. So now we're gonna increase the number of stitches in our round. So technically we have two double crochets in the same stitch. We're gonna do that all the way around. So into the next stitch, we're gonna place two double crochets. So we have one, and then we go back into the same stitch and we have two. And this is what helps our circle maintain its shape. So you're gonna continue around and do that. You're gonna place two double crochets into each and every single stitch. At the end of round two, you should have 24 stitches. Okay, so I've got my 24 stitches all the way around. And now I'm gonna find the top of that chain three, which is right there. And I'm gonna slip stitch to join my round. And now I'm gonna chain one and we're gonna snip our yarn. We're finished with the green for now. So I'm just gonna snip that off there, pull that through. And our center is complete, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pick up our next color, which for me is gonna be the yellow. And this is where we're gonna do that fun loop stitch. And like I said in the intro, 
there is a link for that in the description box down below if you just want to do something with only the loop stitch. So I'm going to pick up my circle here. So this is the center of my little flower motif. And I'm going to insert my hook. Now, I always like to start away from the last knot that I did. I just find that it kind of spreads out where those knots are. So I'm just going to come back a few stitches. I'm going to insert my hook. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place my yellow and pull it through just like that. And I'm going to turn that tail over and I'm going to chain one. Okay. And now I'm going to do my first loop stitch. So remember with the loop stitch, what we're going to do is we're just going to stretch up this yarn just a little bit and into this same stitch we're going to insert our hook but normally we would hook we would yarn over right here we're going to hook over so we're going to place the hook over and then we're going to reach behind to pick up that loop that's falling over the finger and that's what i'm going to pull through so i have two loops on the hook then i'm going to yarn over and single crochet and then you can let go and your first loop is complete. Now what's happening here is this is technically the right side and our loops when we do it this way will end up on the wrong side. Now I'm doing this on purpose and you'll notice this later on because I actually find, and I'm gonna weave in that tail, I find for this project the back side is much prettier. So essentially once we do our panel, this back side will become the front. So in case you're doing your work and you're going, oh no, I've done it on the back side, you're actually correct. If you're doing it exactly with me, you are correct. So let's do that loop stitch again. So you're always gonna go into the next stitch. You're gonna insert your hook. I'm gonna try and work over that loop there. And then you're going to hook over the yarn and then go behind and hook the other loop there and pull that through okay then you have two loops then you can yarn over still keeping the loop over your finger and finish the single crochet and then you can release the loop oh i'm going to weave that in afterwards so see there you've got two loops and that's how you create your loop so let's do that one more time so we're going to go into the next stitch so you always insert first like a regular single crochet you Push your hook over the yarn and then go to the back thread there and hook that to bring that through. And that's what you bring through. Keeping the loop on the finger, you will then yarn over and pull through like a single crochet and then drop the loop. Now it's secured, okay? So I'm just gonna work over this little knot here just to show you guys. So I'm gonna go right in there. That's my next stitch. Whoops, and then I'm gonna hook over the yarn and bring up the bottom or the back loop we'll call it and pull that through and then yarn over and single crochet boop just like that and now you can just simply work over this tail so now into the next stitch insert over behind and pull you'll notice once you get into the groove doing this it's actually quite easy then you yarn over and pull through. So in this round, this is round number three, we will not be increasing. So anytime we do rounds with loops, we are just gonna maintain the loop, uh, the stitch count. So in round two, we had 24 stitches. So at the end of round three, you're also gonna have 24 stitches. So if I just turn that over here, now you can see the loops really, really nicely. So I'm just gonna take, I'm gonna bring up this panel here that I've been working on. So this is the effect. So you can see this is actually the wrong side of your initial circle. So this is what the back looks like, which is really cool. In a way, you could make this a reversible panel. So that is technically the right side. Oh, sorry, that is technically the right side of the center, right? But I just find that it looked really, really pretty this way. So technically, when we're working these loops, we are working them from the back side of the loop. So the front side will actually be here. Oh, sorry. This is the back side of the loop. See, the loops go away from you. So when you turn over your work, um, that is the front side. It'll make more sense as we do more rounds. So what you're gonna do is you are gonna go ahead and finish round number three with all of your loops. 
you will have 24 stitches in total. And then you are going to snip your yarn and change colors. And I'll meet back up with you when we're getting ready to start round number four. Okay, so I've come up to the end of round number three. You will notice that it's gonna to start to curl a wee bit. Do not panic. That will all work out once we do subsequent rows. So just make sure that you do have your 24 stitches. I almost had only 23, so make sure you've got your 24 stitches. And then when you come to the end, you're just gonna push the loops back. You just wanna slip stitch to join your yarn to the very first stitch, just like that. And then snip your yarn, okay? And of course you can weave in your ends as you go or you can weave them in at the end. So we're done with our yellow, okay? So this is round number one. So now when I turn my work this way, see this is the back, and now my loops are pushed to the front, which is what I want, okay? It's gonna look a little flimsy at the beginning. So for round number four, what we're gonna do now, from now on, is actually we are always gonna turn our work at the end of every round. So you know when you work a flat project, you come to the end of the row, you chain one or chain two, whatever, and you turn your work. Usually when we work in the round, we don't have to turn our work, but for this project, I'm going to. So anytime you see the single crochets kind of pushing up. This is the wrong side, okay? So once you're finished your loop round, you will then turn your work, and this is how we're gonna start the next round. So round number four, we're gonna bring our yellow color, I'm sorry, we're gonna bring our green color back, and we are gonna go back to increasing. So all of our green rounds will be increase rounds. And again, that's what helps to keep the rounded shape. So I'm just gonna push these down here so I can see where my stitches are right there. And as always, I like to start a ways back from the original, from that last knot. And I'm gonna insert my hook right there. And I'm gonna pull up the green. Now, many of you have seen me do slip knots on the hook first. And you've also seen me do lots of projects where I don't do that. So if I'm working on a lot of projects that have a lot of tie-offs or knots, I tend not to do that. I like to decrease the amount of knots that are in there. It just kind of decreases the bulk. So I am just going to chain one to secure it. Now I'm gonna chain an additional two, one, two, and this will count as a double crochet stitch. Now, right back into the same stitch, I am going to place another double crochet. I'm gonna try and work over that tail. So I'm gonna yarn over and back into that stitch. I'm gonna place a double crochet. So round number four is gonna be all double crochets. And so we are going to increase into every other stitch. So these technically are two double crochets. Into the next stitch, I'm only gonna place one double crochet just like that. Into the next stitch, I'm gonna place two double crochets. Now always be careful to push down your loops because it's so easy to pick up one of those loops while you're doing your stitches. So you wanna make sure you keep that nice and tidy. So there's two. Now we're gonna go into the next stitch and we're gonna place one double crochet. Okay, and then in the next stitch, you're gonna place two double crochets. So see, I can work over my tails as I go along. This just helps keep them out of the way. Okay, so you have something that looks like that. So the repeat is two stitches, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, all the way around. At the end of round four, you should now have 36 stitches, okay? So now you can see when those loops sit against the green backdrop, it really helps to show those loops through. So you're gonna just continue doing that all the way to the end of round number four, and then I'll meet up with you at the end of this round to just explain how you're gonna continue repeating after this. Okay, so I've come up to the end of round four and I made sure I have 36 stitches. So you see, it's, it's flattening out again. So all of your loop rounds are gonna buck a little bit and then when you do the green, see it starts to flatten out again, so it's all good. So you come to the end there, you find the top of your chain three 
and you slip stitch to join, just like that, like do a little chain one, and then you snip your yarn, and you are done with round number four. So that green really gives it a beautiful um, background palette so that you can see the loops come through. And that's basically what we are doing for the rest of this panel. So what you're gonna do now is you would turn your work or flip your work over and bring your yellow yarn back. So I'm just gonna kind of go over that with you. Okay, so I'm gonna insert here so you know the drill. So there's the stitch. Pull that through, chain one, and then we're gonna begin our loop stitch. So I always go back into that same stitch and loop. Now, the size of your loops, you might wanna kind of pay attention to that. I am purposely trying to keep my loops not too high away. Sometimes when we do loops, so I'm gonna insert, like you can really make it so that it's a quite a large loop. So you can stretch that finger up and do that loop this way. So see the difference? So because I didn't want them to hang too high, I always kept my finger pretty close to my project there, okay? So now you can see they start to overlap each other. So for the rest of this panel, you are going to repeat round three and round four continuously until you get the size of your pillow. So this is my first panel here that I've started working on. And I have a total of 12 rounds so far. And let me just measure what I've got here. And so my diameter is 10 inches, which is 25.5 centimeters. So I'm pr I need about 14 inches. So because my pillow insert is 16 inches in diameter, I you always want to make your pillow cover slightly smaller than that by an inch or two. And that's because that will allow your cover to really hug the insert and give you a nice smooth finish. So I've got 10 inches so far in diameter. I need 14. I'm probably gonna repeat my rounds for another four, uh, four rounds, which actually will be eight rounds, right? So. One of these rounds is the green and one is the loop round. So in total, I am going to have 18 rounds. Okay, and give or take. Some As you go, make sure that you place that panel kind of over the pillow you wanna create it for. And you may need to take out a couple of rows, you may need to add a couple of rows. So this is the time to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and go up to 18 rounds to create this first panel. And then I'll measure my pillow. And if I'm happy with that, then I will go ahead and do the same thing for the second panel. So you need to create two of these panels, okay? Isn't that cool how it's coming out? All right, guys, so I'm gonna leave you there. You're gonna finish panel number one. Then you're gonna go back and start again, Create, recreate the whole thing for panel number two. When you have two panels, I will meet back up with you here to talk about sewing those panels together. Okay, I forgot to mention one thing before I set you guys loose. So I finished one panel here. But when I said that you all you're gonna do is repeat row three and row four, uh, that is true, meaning you're gonna, every odd numbered row, you're gonna do the loops with no increases. And every even numbered row, you're going to do the double crochet stitches, but there will be, the increases will, be modified. So you want to follow the principles of crocheting a circle, right? So with every round, the number of stitches between each increase will increase. Um, so I will leave a link for that tutorial in the description box down below to just really clarify it if you're a little bit new and kind of are not sure what I'm talking about. So in round number four, so you can see there that there's two stitches in there. That's an increase. And then we had one double crochet and then an increase, one double crochet and an increase. 
So the next time I do the next round, see, I have an increase. I do two stitches in between the increase, okay? The round after that, I do three stitches in between each increase. So hopefully that makes sense. So then in the next round, it would be, where's my increase here? See, there's the increase. Then it would be one, two, three, four, and then an increase. So the number of stitches between each increase increases with every round. And so that was just the one thing I wanted to make sure I clarified for those of you that are a little newer. So I've already done one panel. So this is how mine turned out. And of course, I've now run out of my yellow yarn. So now I'm going to do the second panel and it's going to be in white and green. So I'm going to finish my second panel and then I'm going to come back on and we are going to sew these panels together. Okay, guys, so I have finished both of my panels here. And as you can see, I finally did run out of my green and I did still use up the last little bits of the yellow I had. I really just wanted to use it all up. I hate having those little balls of uh, leftover yarn. So didn't quite give me a full circle around, but you know, you can kind of see it as a smiley face or the letter C, you know, however you like it. So on this side, I used the green as my loops and then the white as my background color. And then on this side, I've got the yellow and then the green as my background color. So still very springy. And actually what I like about this is that you can have a different look depending on which side of the pillow you choose. Now for the last round here, I did want to kind of show you all. So I ended on a double crochet stitch row. And then I added one more row of half double crochet stitches. Hopefully you can see that there. Okay. And so this actually was another increase row. Okay. So at the end of my panel, I have 144 stitches. Now, don't worry if you get to the end of the same number of rows as I do and maybe you ended up having 150 or even 140. Sometimes along the way, you might have accidentally added an extra stitch or taken one away. It's not the end of the world because once we sew it all together, it's all gonna get hidden, it's all good. So I've got both panels here. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn them so that the wrong side's facing up here and then the wrong side is facing it. So the wrong sides are together. You just want to smooth that out. Now you can probably see that this one looks a little smaller and that's because the yarn that I have, even though it's also, actually it's not, I think this is considered the softy baby. I, I, I'll have to check the label. I think it's actually considered like um, a lightweight number three yarn. So it's just slightly uh, a thinner yarn than the medium four weight. Of course, you should always use the exact same weight, um, but I was trying to use up all my scraps. So that's why there it looks slightly smaller, even though they have the same number of stitches. So just wanted to address that in case you were thinking something looked off there. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna put these together and I also have my zipper on hand here, okay? Now I've got a bunch of these 22 inch zippers and I, I like having the long uh, zippers around. It's much easier to, to cut them as opposed to always trying to find a longer one. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna kind of shape this around here. Now, if you, if you like, you can just keep the length that, that it is. So it's almost pretty much going around halfway around the pillow. Now for pillows, I like to keep the opening slightly smaller than the rest of the shape because it just helps for stuffing and keeping the pillow in place when I'm trying to close the zip. So I'm actually going to shorten this zipper down to about 16 inches. So I've got my ruler here and I'm, I'm measuring from the tip of where the zip pull stops, not at the top because this part gets tucked in. So I'm, I just wanna look at the opening. So I've got, I'm gonna have that there. So I'm gonna go 16 inches. So that's pretty much how much I'm gonna cut off my zipper. So that means now, so you see, so now my opening is a little bit smaller. So what I'm gonna do right away is I'm just going to place 
a little stitch marker here, and another one right there. And that will just remind me of where my opening is. So what you wanna do is match up the number of stitches, so make sure you have the same number of stitches that are going to be along the closed side. And then I'll take my stitch marker and I'm just gonna match it up here, just like that. Okay, so they're both together. I'll do the same thing on the other side. And then I'll know that this section here will remain open. So I'm just gonna go ahead and double check my count and then place the other stitch marker on both of them. And then I'm gonna pick up my um, seaming yarn, we'll call it. So I've got the white left over, so this is what I'm gonna close off my side with. So let me just go ahead, I'm just gonna pause for a moment, I'm gonna count up my stitches, make sure I'm nice and accurate. Then I'm gonna come back and show you guys how we are going to seam up our side here. Okay, so I've got my opening pinned here. I counted my proper number of stitches. So I am gonna start with the green side just because I have the white yarn and the back end of the stitch is gonna blend in just nicely there. So I'm gonna begin where my first stitch marker is and I'm gonna start off by placing a slip knot on my hook just like that. And we are going to insert, so I'm just gonna take that stitch marker out. I'm gonna insert my hook into the front panel and the back panel, just into the stitch there. And I'm gonna slip stitch to join my yarn. So I'm just gonna pull up this loop like that and pull that through. Just throw my tail in there. Now I'm gonna chain one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use single crochet stitches to stitch up our side. So right back into the same stitch, I just slip stitch, I'm gonna insert my hook into the front panel as well as the back panel and single crochet. And then into the next one, I'm gonna do the same thing and single crochet. And that's pretty much it. There'll be no increases here. And don't worry if your work starts to buck a little bit. Remember, we're going to stretch this over a pillow. So that kind of stuff always just dissipates and goes away. So that's pretty much it. Nothing too crazy or magical. You're just gonna place one stitch into each stitch through both panels all the way around. See, so there is that side and there's your back, it blends in nicely. You're gonna continue all the way around until you get to your stitch marker. Okay, so I finished sewing up my panels here all the way around. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna finish off the opening. So this will give us something nice and uniform to sew the zipper to. And remember that I do have a how to sew your zipper onto a crocheted project video. Uh, because of course I knew we were gonna do a lot of zipper sewing in this year's crochet series. So I'll make sure to leave a link for that in the description box down below once we're finished this little edge here and then we're that much closer to finishing our pillow. So I've just finished sewing the last two sides here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just drop the white for a moment and I'm gonna continue to just single crochet into the front panel only. So now I'm just gonna go into the green portion and I'm just gonna continue to single crochet all the way around. So this will take me right back to where I started, okay? So I'm just doing a few here so you can see. So we had the pillow together and then once it broke off, I just continued on here. So see, that way the white will stay nice and uniform and when we sew our zipper in, it'll kind of look a little bit more camouflaged. So you're gonna continue along the front panel, okay, until you get to here. So once you get here, what you wanna do is you wanna slip stitch into that first stitch, but then continue, turn your work and then continue single crocheting around this edge here. So again, it's gonna give us the even number of stitches on both panels, sorry, even number of rows 
or rounds on both panels. You're gonna continue around, and then once you come to here, you'll do the same thing. You'll just slip stitch, but you'll fasten off here, okay? Fasten off, weave in that end, and then we're gonna be ready to sew in our zipper, okay? And again, I'll just actually also leave it for you here in the cards up there, and that is the tutorial on how to sew your zipper. So just refer to that anytime you wanna know how to hand sew a zipper. And then basically, next time I meet up with you, we are going to be ready to place your pillow insert, and your pillow will be complete. So. I'll meet you back here in just a moment. When it comes to video editing magic, it'll happen in a few seconds for you, but it'll be a little while for me because I'm gonna finish single crocheting my finished edge here. Okay, so I just wanted to show you really quickly that I finished sewing my edge and that was my where I slip stitch to join. And now my opening is See how that looks nice and seamless there? So now my opening is ready for my zipper and we are just about there. Okay, so I have sewn in my zipper. So my pillow is looking like this. Just make sure that it works and it zips up comfortably. Look at that, isn't that so cute? So we've got this side here and then on the other side. Actually, I kind of like how that came out. So. On the one side, you've got you know, your yellow being accentuated with the green backdrop. And then on the other side, you've got the yellow, uh, sorry, you've got the green being accentuated with the white backdrop. And I kind of like the fact that this is a little different. It looks like a C or it could be a smiley face, whatever you, um, whatever you decide it's gonna be. So the last thing that we need to do is actually just insert our pillow. So I'm gonna take my pillow insert or the pillow that I'm making this for, which is this guy here. Now I, when I created this pillow, I sewed the insert in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use this as a pillow cover, uh, depending on the season. Sometimes I wanna have my sweet pea pillow showing as is, and sometimes I wanna create this little really pretty spring-like effect. So I'm just gonna insert my pillow into the, cover. Okay, so I've got it to sit in there nicely. Don't be afraid to kind of maneuver the cover however you need it. And now I'm ready. Whoops. Now I'm ready to zip it up. Just be careful not to catch any of the threads from the pillow that's already in there. And don't worry that the um, stitches stretch at all, like that's what this is meant for, right? So you may have to just do a little extra maneuvering and just kind of shape it up. Look at how gorgeous that looks. So this is a great thing. This is why with pillows, it's fine if you get a little bit of rippling because once you put the insert in, like look at how beautifully it just smooths out over the shape. Look at that. So you've got the green on the one side and the white on the other. And there you have it. This is the Lulu Pillow Complete. I just love that looped effect. So guys, this probably took you a little while just because of creating the loops, but how fun is this? Perfect for springtime. Of course, you can do it in any color way you like. And uh, I'm actually curious to see what kind of colors you guys are gonna use for your pillow. So don't forget, make sure to tag me on Instagram and or Facebook, I'm at the Stitch Sessions, and show me some pictures of your pillow. Look at how cute that is. Now, if you have any questions, as always, make sure to leave them for me in the comment box down below. And as always, you can send me your questions directly at info at crochetcrafty.com. I'm always very happy to answer any detailed questions that you guys have. And don't forget, come visit me on the Crochet Crafty website, which is crochetcrafty.com. There's lots of great material there for you, like sizing charts, written patterns. I've got a whole bunch of free written patterns on there and a link to our Etsy shop as well. So guys, I hope that you enjoy this project. So happy crocheting. Remember, please do take good care of yourselves and I will see you guys in next week's session. Take care.